Being a paper artist, I have a quite special attachment to papers of all kinds. But I also have a personal passion for letters and old documents. So it's not really surprising that I like to write, to send and to receive letters. Since I started to write and send letters more often about two years ago, I've always been surprised by the reactions of people when I say that I correspond on a regular basis with paper and ink. They always wonder how it is possible in the 21st century to use such a slow and old-fashioned way to communicate. So why writing letters in the 21st century? Well, first, why should we imitate what everybody does if we don't like it? I don't like these modern ways to communicate, these short text messages filled with emojis which don't mean anything, filled with spelling mistakes, with not a single polite word, sent while the person was feeling an empty moment of her or his life, as quickly sent, as quickly received and as quickly forgotten. Corresponding with physical paper is the opposite of all that. I prefer long, beautiful and meaningful sentences with very long unabridged words. When you are writing a paper letter, you are honoring the person you are sending it to. Just like making an extra effort to dress nicely when visiting a friend instead of coming in sportswear clothes and sneakers. It's like dressing your words with a beautiful outfit. Writing letters requires focus. You can't multitask and try to do two things at the same time when you are writing. You are fully there for the person you are writing to. And you know that the person who writes to you is doing the same. And is not doing her groceries or doing her dishes while talking to you. When you write a letter, you need to be seated and gather your thoughts and make time and space for it. It's a most special, sacred, polite and poetic way to communicate. And on top of that, you can add some drawings. I like to have some little quickly done drawing or painting on my envelopes and letters. Cold emails don't have an envelope. You can't have a beautiful stamp or wax seal. You can't have scented paper or scented ink. When you write letters, you time travel. I admit that I don't entirely live in this century. So using a way of communicating which has been around for such a long time is very attractive to me and makes me instantly travel in time. When I'm writing a letter to a dear friend, at the same time I live the very same experience which was entirely part of people's daily life in the past centuries, sitting on a chair, putting a sheet of paper in front of me, dipping my quill in the ink bottle and write. I don't own yet a writing case, but it is on my list of the writing tools I would like to have. So my writing tools. To write my letters, I like to use some sort of soft ivory paper, which is really soft and nice for my quill. And the quill, this one, is made by Bic, the pen company. And I find it quite wonderful that in our digital times, a big French company known for its pens produce writing quills like this one, with a set of quills to go with it, just for a few euros. And they can last for a very, very long time. It's just more environmental friendly than most of our modern pens. 
I also have some quills attached to wheel feathers, but I have to say, I'm quite, quite attached to my big quill now. For the ink, I like the classic Waterman because of the very convenient shape, diamond shape of the bottle, which is really nice. You can put it in different directions and this way you are sure to use all your ink. I also have the Jacques Herbin inks, which are also really, really nice, high quality inks and the pink one sends rose. Of course, writing letters takes longer than sending quick emails or quick messages. I like to write my letters at night or on weekends. It's just like having a paper appointment with my friends. I used to write in front of my living room window, but I had to change because of the neighbors living on the other side of the street as our street is pretty narrow and now I prefer doing it in the garden side of the apartment, near the, usually near the window of the studio. And the thing with letters is that you can keep them, reread them as often as you want and think about all these friends who have sent them. People in the past used to keep all their correspondences and organize them in boxes. And sometimes they also sealed some of these letters with ribbon and wax if they didn't want anybody to read them after them. Now, who read emails sent a few years ago? When I started writing letters, I also started to write regularly with my quill and ink because I just enjoyed it. And I started to write more in general than I ever had before. Well, for my work, of course, and for my everyday life. Write down ideas for my artwork, workshops, even videos if they need a bit of structure. I also like to write down excerpts and sentences found in the book I'm currently reading that I really like and I want to save. And I gathered those in a reading book I started a little while ago and I still continue to do it. I'm pretty consistent with it. And of course, I use my quill to write down events and things in my life that I want to remember. Not exactly journaling. It's a more modest writing than journaling, but I started to do it also because I started to write letters. And there is, of course, the sensory aspect of writing with ink. So when you write a message on a computer, you don't experience the sound of the quill on paper. the softness of paper, the scent of the ink, and the stain on fingers. You can't stain your fingers with the keyboard. Stains on the letter, the corrections, of course. It's just more real. And of course there is your handwriting, and the handwriting on a letter can reveal so much more to the receiver of the letter than the words themselves. Like if you were in a hurry, if you were focused, if you were sad, if you were in a good mood. There are so many things you can guess when you see the handwriting of your correspondent. And what about the joy of opening your letterbox and discovering a beautiful envelope waiting for you? and taking the time to open and read it. Thank you very much for watching my little video about letters and writing letters in our century. Um, let me know if it has inspired you maybe to try a bit to write or to write to a few friends instead of always using your phone or your emails or your text messages or that. It's just a special way to communicate and I couldn't encourage you enough to do it just for fun, for no other reason than that, just because it's special and you keep the messages of the persons 
who writer you are and you are, you are writing to. So um, yes, I just wanted to share that. So there are many things I wanted to say. Right now I'm still working on my Christmas workshop. As you can see, the living room is now back to its normal state, natural state, before I put back all the festive decors for Christmas. And I quite like this peaceful moment before all the madness arrives again. So I will be back soon with all my video about Christmas. And just know also that all the Christmas workshops are open, all the other ones, there are quite many if you're interested to do a, a paper nutcracker, some paper gingerbread man, some Christmas carriage uh, with paper lights, um, some paper candy cane, all of these things. You have the link just under this video if you are interested uh, to create your paper decals this year. And I will come back soon, of course, with the new decals of the new workshop. I also wanted to say that the exhibition Magie Baroque that you had seen, I had made several videos about it, which was at Le Château de Parentinia and Le Château de villeneuve lambron this, uh, this summer, is now at Bayeul, um, at Le Musée de Bayeul. Bayeul is 20 minutes away from Lille in the north of France. It's very easy to go there in public transport, in train. At Lille you have two rail stations and you can go from one to the other, just walking for three minutes and you're there. And the, the little town Bayeul is very easy also uh, to access by foot. So you have zero excuses if you live in England in Belgium, in Netherlands, not to go this winter or uh, during the, the festive season. It's just a magical exhibition and I couldn't recommend enough for you to go if you live in this area because it's, it's easy, it's just very easy. Even from London you can go and come back at the end of the day in England. You don't even have to stay in France because you can do it with a Eurostar. So, I will put the link of the Musée de Bayeul under this video if you are interested, if you want to know all the practical details about the opening hours, all that. Um, and I hope those who live in this area will, will make the effort to go. I know in the, center, in the center of France it was a bit more difficult to go because there were not a lot of public transport to go. But in Bayeul it's super easy, so you have to go. I will be back soon with all my Christmas videos. And for now, I will leave you here. As always, don't forget to give a thumbs up. It's always helpful for my videos. And subscribe if you didn't do it because there are a lot of nice videos coming. Thank you and I will see you soon.